This is one of those great questions that can be answered by saying it depends. And it does depend. It depends on quite a lot. Um, in some ways, it depends upon how desperate the insured situation is. You know, if you're in a distressed situation in terms of obtaining any kind of coverage at all in the market, then you may more easily absorb the cost of, uh, uh, of establishing a captive insurance program and a captive insurance company. Um, but for most people, I think uh, we really need to be thinking about not so much what is the premium level at, at, at which a captive makes sense, but look at it the other way around. What is the sort of underwriting profit within the captive that actually now starts to make it make sense? Um, so, you know, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the pure underwriting profit of the captive insurance program is at least sufficient to cover the fixed and variable costs of operating the captive. Uh, otherwise, you know, from a pure financial point of view, we're wasting our time. Um, and time is important. Um, it, it isn't just a question of, oh dear, I'm not making money here, uh, because the establishment of a captive does require a commitment by the management of the insured um, to stay involved, keep an eye on it, and uh, pay attention to risk management, loss control, and all of these things, as well as to the corporate governance of the captive. Um, so, uh, very difficult to say, um, but, and, and different numbers move the needle for different people. Um, you know, if I said to one potential captive owner, you will be $200,000 a year better off uh, if you have a captive insurance company. Some of them are going to say, that's fantastic. Uh, I really like what you're telling me, and I'd like to go ahead and form a captive. But for a larger organization, the time that is going to be spent by management uh, may simply, you know, be too much to make that sort of sum of money uh, relevant to them. Uh, we should think also about the tax consequences of forming a captive and the tax treatment of the captive's income. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, captives, any insurer has the ability to establish reserves and therefore defer the recognition of income for tax purposes. Uh, so it's not just uh, a question of, oh, I'm $200,000 or $500,000 a year better off. It may also be, and I'm not going to pay tax on that uh, in, in increased benefit for a number of years to come. Uh, and of course, in the case of smaller captives, um, and I think at the moment uh, we're talking about captives, uh, uh, property and casualty captives with premium income not exceeding $2.65 million a year. Um, the election under Section 831B uh, eliminates uh, tax on underwriting profits entirely. Uh, so, you know, when does it become worthwhile? As I say, it depends. But I think those are the things to think about.